It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Two Chefs Brewing Company and this is a can of their Holy Gunter. This is a lager in a 330 milliliter can coming in at 5.1% ABV. Uh, the only Gunter I know is Gunter Steiner, the, the famous Haas boss in Formula One. King hell. <laughs> him, you know, remember? Well, you know him in Formula One. If you're watching this after the Formula one 2021 season well you know he may not be you may not know who Gunter Steiner is anymore um, but he's one of the Formula One bosses one of the team owners or, or managers famous on the Netflix kind of documentaries for swearing a lot and not really knowing what he's doing um, we got a one finger white head Good levels of carbonation rolling up the glass. It's a hazy kind of straw coloured lager. The glass does have a widget. Let me get it right over to show you. Hence the probably the carbonation being a little bit more kind of lively than it normally would be. I have chilled this lager down. I've just literally got it out the fridge about five minutes ago. So I think every lager should be consumed straight out the fridge. I think that it's part of what a lager is really. You don't drink warm lager, you don't drink anywhere near warm lager, do you? You have a lager nice and cold. So lager, is it going to be the next big thing? We've all been talking about it for a number of years now. Is lager going to be a big thing? And, and I had a wonderful comment from somebody who explained why he thinks Lager will never become a big thing. Craft lager will never become a big thing. But first of all, let's get the aroma on this. It smells lovely. Peppery, spicy, fruity, estery from that laggy yeast. Lovely. It's like a little bit of kind of gooseberry or something. A real light fruity aroma to the beer. I like that pepperiness, that spiciness. It kind of translates to the beer. It's going to be very dry, which we all like in a lager. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Oh, it's very good. It's got a nice lemon, a lemony kind of kick to it. It's fantastically drinkable, very, very drinkable. Very refreshing, dry, spicy, peppery, lemony kind of lager. Carbonation pushes the beer around the inside of the mouth, releases more of that flavour. It's beautiful. Beautiful, but while this is in my mind, I'm gonna get it out, otherwise I'm gonna lose it. So, in a recent Lager review, I think it was from the Lito Mexican Lager that we did from Finland. Um, I had the same conversation about Lager taking so long. Craft Lager, everybody's talking about Craft Lager and it's about to make it. And I had a comment in the comments box on one of my YouTube video on that YouTube video and it made perfect sense it made perfect sense as to why IPA has made it and laggers haven't and and this person's argument was your IPAs from your Green Kings and your Marston's you know, actually Marston's do quite a strong IPA but still very traditional you know you IPAs in the 1990s and early 2000s were all about kind of 3.4% ABV beer. Absolute dreadful stuff. And that the, the American IPA style of beer that was 5, 6, 7% ABV completely took the beer market by storm because how weak the regional breweries IPAs were or the IPA offering was at the time. I get that, I totally get that, and that's the reason why we see lots of IPA in the supermarket at the moment, because, or really good taste in IPA I should say, because there was a massive gap in the market. Now this wonderful comment that comes through said, right, 
Carlsberg export. Now, I don't mind a Carlsberg export. I'll be perfectly honest with that. I used to turn my nose up at all kind of mass-produced lagers, but over the last couple of years, I've changed my tune a little bit, especially trying some on the Philips Perfect Draft, and especially after trying lager in the Stella Artois Brewery in Leuven in Belgium at the Stella plant. Um, that Stella at the Stella factory is a completely different beer than the Stella we get here. So um, the argument goes is that lager companies, good, good, there are some still big lager companies that still make good beer, good lagers, good solid lagers for a fraction of the price of what the craft brewers can produce lager for. And that although craft brewers will probably try to punch their way into the lager market, they'll never really be able to battle on price. And there won't be so much of a difference that, you know, like, like I was talking about earlier, that 3.4% IPA dishwater. There was a gap in the market for these five, six, seven percent IPAs to come rushing in and, and take the market by storm because they, it was so weak. There was no market there. There was no IPA market there. But there's a lager market already in place. There's um, there, there's there's some big brewers out there doing some some pretty decent stuff with lager. Carlsberg Export, just to name one. So I'd love to know if there's a counter argument from you guys, whether you've got something else to say on that. But I've never really thought of that kind of way of thinking before that, that the IPA market was so weak and that's why you know you, you, you've got you've got major players now making really decent IPAs which didn't exist these companies didn't exist 15 years ago I'm looking at you brew dog as, as you know as one now we got TV adverts on the telly advertising IPA there was no there was no IPA really before that that could to come even compete with Brewdog's Punk IPA. Not that Punk IPA is a great beer. Used to be, not anymore. So I'm going to wrap things up with this beer then. Everything in the back is from the Netherlands. It's all in Dutch. It's a wonderful Dutch brewery, this. Uh, two Chefs Brewing Company. And this is a really, really good quality lager. A really, really good quality lager, which I'm a massive, massive fan of. It's got lovely carbonation. It's doing all the things I want a good lager to do. It's ticking all the boxes of a good lager. It's tasty. It's clean. It's crisp. It's refreshing. It's peppery and spicy and bitter on the back end with some lemon flavours and some, some gooseberry in there as well. I could drink can after can after can of that. I really could. It's fabulous. Really, really fabulous lager. But I'm really interested in your comments on that conversation we just had <laughs> regarding lager and can it can it kind of make a make a play for itself in the in the already busy market of, of, of lagers. Um, I like this beer enough to give it an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.